Hey guys, it's Whiskey Bloke. I'm back. We're going to be doing some cooking now, some lovely cooking, and this cooking is going to involve some cooking, and we're going to flavour the cooking. We're not just going to be cooking, we're going to be preparing as well. Did I say we were going to be cooking? I think I did. Right, so it's a bit of a healthier option, but we are going to include some whiskey in this uh, food prep. And the whiskey I'm going to be using for cooking, because I generally quite like to have my, um, like the Scottish whiskey that I use, I like to use that uh, for pure just drinking, I like that neat. The whiskies I quite like to experiment with the cooking with are the bourbon looking whiskey. This one, this, this, this lovely fine example was actually a gift. It was a gift to me. Not a gift I forgot to give, it was a gift to me. This one is Gentleman Jack, and it's double mellowed Tennessee whiskey at 40%. Comes with a lovely little label, and uh, I'll just read it to you. Uh, Gentleman Jack, uh, tasting notes, aroma, clean soft nose with vanilla and caramel character. And then we've got taste, flavour forward in the mouth. Uh, okay, and then the finish, um, is very much like a sloth, warm and short. So there we are, and it's carefully crafted by the makers of Jack Daniel number no. seven. General Jack is double charcoal, charcoal mellowed, once before maturing in our handmade oak barrels, and once again after. The result is a Tennessee whiskey with a light spice character an exceptional smoothness. So we're going to use that for this steak. Yeah, we're going to be making a steak marinade. Now your steak you can use, I've gone for, this is a, I can't remember if it's an eight or a 10 ounce, but whatever it is, it's ribeye. Quite a nice bit of thickness to that. It's in a packet, so you know. I won't be in the packet for long though when I start doing it. I just left it there at room temperature just to let it, you know, warm up a little bit. It will be going back in and mixing with all these lovely ingredients, sure, but for now, a room temperature. The process for the steak is we're going to be cutting it very thin across, like so, into thin slices, which I will show you on camera. That will then be put into the bowl. It will be mixed up and it'll be left overnight in that fridge. There is a fridge over there. When it's left in that fridge overnight, it'll be ready for tomorrow night's din-dins. And then you can either have it with, oh, I don't know, like, because it'll be in a nice sauce, you'll have like sticky rice, or maybe you want it in a baguette or whatever you want. But we'll come back tomorrow night once we've done this bit and we'll have that ready. So the ingredients we need for this, you need um, uh, an onion, you need uh, an apple, half an apple, you need three spring onions. So I'll actually show you the ingredients because that's probably how they do it on TV, isn't it? Half an apple, Ooh, there's the half. Three spring onions, un, deux, trois. Um, black pepper, uh, light soy, Ooh, I like light soy. The other one's too heavy to hold for the camera like that. Uh, sesame oil, eh. and uh, I like this chili paste. <laughs> It's a nice, it's easier to use that. Need some garlic cloves. Yeah. And then we also need some, I like the Demira brown sugar. Adds a bit of sweetness. Need some of that as well. So we're gonna whack this all together and I'll talk it through as we're going and we'll go from there. Cool beans. You, oh, one thing you also need, sorry, I forgot to mention, it's like a food processor to blend it all together afterwards. Be careful with this knife, it's quite sharp. Do not run with the knife. Repeat, do not, do not run with the knife. So the food processor up there. We have a mixing bowl as well, which is here. Oop, have a glass mixing bowl ready. It doesn't have to be glass, I quite like glass. It makes me feel like I'm on TV. So uh, obviously use your meat chopping surface for the meat and the veg one for the veg. Keep it all nice and separate, best way. Uh, I'm just cutting the onion right now. I find the best way to cut the onion is to push the knife down uh, in a pushing motion using the sharper edge of the knife. The handle doesn't quite do um, a good enough job for this. Uh, and then take off the skin so you're left with the actual onion itself. Lovely. 
Uh, you probably won't want to use the whole onion. I usually go for just over half an onion. Um, and then, yeah, just cut through the majority of the onion, make a few little incisions like so, and then you can end up with a very quick and easy way to chop the onion into pieces. You don't need to be exact with this, because don't forget, it's all going in to the food processor, but just get it to a good enough size so that you can put it into that little tub, which isn't on camera, but once I've put it in, what I'll do is I'll do a really cheap version of um, whatever it is that they do, and uh, I'll just show, look, it's in there. <clears throat> That's cool, isn't it? Yay. Uh, then the spring onions. So you want to cut off the ends of the spring onions, you know, the bits that you never use, and then the bases as well, the bits that have got like a hairy base to them, just cut that off. And then just cut the spring onion in like two places, like so. So there, that kind of length. Oh. Put them in there as well, in the little tubby tub. Then what we want is we want a teaspoon, a teaspoon for those at home, I don't know, is the spoon you use to stir your tea. That's how it got its name, teaspoon. Up until that point, they were just like, oh, I don't know what to call it. So a teaspoon of black pepper, ground black pepper. Lid back on, gotta be good. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, next thing to add is 80 grams. Oh yeah, that's basically a third of a cup of soy sauce. So what I do is I get a little cup. Hey, I put it on my little scales, got digital scales there. I put it on zero, it gets to zero, and then just pour in the soy sauce until it reads eight zero grams. Boom, bang on, put the lid back on. And then I'm gonna pour that into the tubby tub. Okay. Then the next thing to do um, is cut your apple in such a way that the seeds aren't going to end up in the food processing um, unit piece. Now what we'll do is we will add three tablespoons of brown sugar. Um, there are three of them. And then one tablespoon of sesame oil. So that goes in as well. It looks a bit like that right now. You see that? Got a nice little sugar bit, quite liquidy at the bottom. Really should have invested in two cameras. Bah, who cares? You thought me to have another camera, buy it for me. Uh, then you want to put in your chili paste. Um, what I find helps with the chili paste is to take off the little foil first, because otherwise you're just squeezing with no outcome and uh, doesn't really get anywhere. So, there we are. So yeah, eating healthy is important. Obviously body image, it matters to people these days. People wanna feel attractive to people. That's why, you know, some people, they spend a lot of time and effort, uh, you know, they, 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 they try and make themselves look nice. I usually do two spoons, uh, tablespoons of chili paste, because I quite like mine to be, you know, like that. And then just whack in your garlic cloves as well, because that is important. Uh, you want three garlic cloves, and there you go. Add a bit of garlicky stuff to it, they are. Um, and that is what we have so far. So just to highlight and recap, um, I'll go back to the image thing. Yeah, so it's important, in my opinion, to eat healthy. You wanna obviously feel comfortable with how you look. You wanna you know, have pride in yourself. Whatever your body image, it's about what you think looks good. Um, we all go through different phases in life, and we all go through different processes. For me, I personally enjoy cooking. I find it quite therapeutic. I quite enjoy cooking and then sharing the food that I've cooked and getting feedback from others. It gives me like a sense of satisfaction. Uh, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm actually gonna share this one with anyone. But that is what I would usually do. So just to recap, garlic cloves, three. Um, two thirds, maybe three quarters of a, I put a red onion in. Three spring onions with the tops split off and the bases split off, some three pieces, wedge them in. Half an apple, in he goes. 
uh, 80 grams of light soy sauce. You don't have to use light, but I find it lighter. Uh, one tablespoon of sesame oil, three tablespoons of brown sugar, and then um, your chili, um, chili paste. I put in two of them. Uh, oh yeah, and one teaspoon of black pepper. I don't know if I said that already. Then what you want to do is you want to blend that. Make sure the lid goes on properly, because otherwise it won't work. Ooh. And then you get the lid and then you put it on there. And while this is going on, obviously put the switch on, but the, the main thing to remember is quite important that as we do <laughs> blending i always shake it up a little bit mm, it smells good i'm assuming right there's the sauce now what we want to do is now that that's blending getting ready us to add that whiskey I'm using Gentleman Jack. I prefer cooking and experimenting with a bourbon. Uh, I prefer my single malts and whatnot, like my Scotch whiskies and that, Japanese ones, the single malts that I've got then, uh, to be just drunk neat. I quite like bourbons when it comes to cooking. So, next thing to do is let that dust settle, as it were, uh, with what you've just blended. And then what you want to do is take out your steak. You want to have that. Nice and prepped. Take yourself out your cutting knife. It's obviously a lot sharper because it's a meat knife. And I like to cut the steak pieces very, very thin. And how about cutting them thin? Bear in mind, this is going in like a, um, it could be a curry topping. It could be, like, this is a paste. So it can be like a Korean Oriental kind of beef dressing, but I could also use it and fry it in such a way that it, it makes it a bit stickier and absorb, um, not absorbs, uh, not evaporates either, but you know, like dries up a lot of the paste when you cook it. And then you could just use the loose bits of the meat within the baguette. <clears throat> now I've cut them all nice and thin, like so. Give you an idea, like so, like so. I then put them in the glass bowl, Whoop. in they go. That'll be ready for when I pour that sauce on. Now the last thing to do, uh, is add the um, the bourbon. So this hasn't been opened yet, so I'm just gonna break that seal. There we are, it's open. And the amount I like to add, <laughs> excuse me, um, there we are, it's on zero. I will again add 80 grams of the bourbon to help marinate. Now this is double mellowed, Gentleman Jack. Nice little gift from a customer, believe it or not. Oh yeah, I have a job. Uh, and then what we do is we pour that in with the rest of the sauce. Now let me shake that in. So to give you an idea of what it looks like, that is what we're dealing with right now. And then we want to pour that, there we go, on top of the steak, plimp. Now, my advice would be, use exactly the same recipe for your chicken, but instead of steak, use chicken. Uh, use exactly the same recipe for your tofu, for your, I don't know, vegan mince. And then I just literally stir in the, the steak with a the, with the spoon. The reason I use a spoon is because it doesn't make as much mess as my fingers. Although I did just flick it across the room. Okay, and the final thing to do would be to seal in, <laughs> that's good. You can't smell it, but trust me, it's good. Seal in that freshness. And the way we do that is a bit of cling film. Do, 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 cling film, like so, and resist the urge to pull it across my face and wrap it right the way round under the bowl. And then pull it across this way, make a nice little there, right there, and we have it. 
and that goes like so. And that we're left in there to marinate overnight. <clears throat> yum, yum. So that'll go in the fridge. Out. The whole process, excluding the overnight bit in the fridge, is literally not even going to take you 20 minutes. Uh, not even that. So you have no excuse to not love yourself and make yourself something tasty. So um, I'll see you tomorrow night when I carry on the rest of this video. But it's not actually going to be tomorrow night because essentially you can watch this in one full swoop. How exciting. Ooh. Hey guys, it's me, Whiskey Bloke, and it's time to carry on with our little bit of food. Yeah, boy! I've got my hat on slightly differently this time because I'm promoting the fact that I'm still young, cool, hip and with it. Mm. Throwing those gangster signs at you. Yeah, man. Don't forget to subscribe. So basically what we're going to be doing now is finishing off the rather tasty, now marinated little meal that we prepared. It's got that little bit of sauce to it. It's still in the fridge. Shh, it's sleeping. And so what you need for this video is quite simply a saucepan, <laughs> looks like that. A hob of some kind, could be induction, could be gas, could be an arga. <laughs> and um, you'll need some rice. I've got a cupboard here, I've got the rice in there. So I'm gonna put the rice in a pan, bring it to the boil. Uh, I think it's about nine minutes, <laughs> I'll have to check. Um, I quite like the rice, uh, it, when, you're, when you're boiling it, one bit of advice I always give is do not stir the rice. Let it just properly you know, go right through, yeah? Leave it, wash it through with a sieve first under the tap, my tap's over there, hence I'm pointing over there. If your tap's over there, point over there, you know? Common sense. So uh, yeah, without further ado, we shall start. Ugh. Ready, steady, cook. Can't cook, won't cook. I don't know any others. Um, but this is Whiskey Bloke's cooking show. Got to think of some theme music for this. But yeah, here we rice. go. So I'm going for a rice dish, which is basically rice uh, on a dish. And then um, we're gonna have the, the, uh, the steak cooking in this pan. So first things first, get a bit of uh, uh, oil, veg oil, rape seed oil, soil. <laughs> it's got hilarious. Normal oil. And we're just going to add the oil to the pan. Add it like so. That is quite a bit, but that'll do for now. Let that heat up in the pan. Ugh. We're going to open up this. Oh, notice the clean film is still intact. So we've left that marinating in the fridge. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Pull off the cling film like so. I find it best to do that because otherwise it doesn't come off good. So what you want to do is pour that into the pan that's got the oil in it. So this is going in there. Ooh, tastes good. Do you need the campo? I'm not very good with other names. There's a two, two fat hairy bikers. Um, Oh, of course, the Naked Chef. Yeah, so think of them while you're cooking it all through and uh, we'll see what we get. Now that literally is simply almost done. You just got to wait for that to heat up. The next bit is obviously the rice that goes in there. Don't really need to prove that I'm doing that because you're going to see it in a second anyway. So <laughs> that'll be fun for you. While that's all cooking, what I will be doing is I want to highlight something that I'll be drinking whilst I eat this meal. Now, obviously, I am into uh, my fitness and I'm into healthy lifestyle, but I do like to treat myself now and then. And because this steak has been marinating in a, uh, a nice whiskey, a bourbon, Gentleman Jack, what we're going to have with it is this little guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is Innes and in Gun, the original barrel aged. OK, really good. So I'm going to read what it is because I think they put it better than I do, seeing as it's their product. The original is our flagship, theirs, not mine, our, I'm not part of, I don't, just, just read the, yeah, okay. Is our flagship beer, the one that started it all. I think they mean for them, not like creation, big bang. 
Our unique bourbon barrel aging process unlocks flavors like vanilla and toffee, which combine with the multi character of our Scotch ale to create an incredible taste experience. We've spent more than a decade perfecting our craft. Find out how we put the barrels into the beer at innocentgun.com. So it's 6.6% volume, 330 mil, but here's the key, bourbon barrel scotch ale. Wow. So this ale goes nice with your meaty kind of meal. <clears throat> meaty meal, but not just a meaty meal. This meaty meal has been marinated in a special sauce that I put together along with Gentleman Jack. Wow! So it's coming up quite nicely now. It's all taking shape. The meat's come up the way I like it. And it'll keep moving it around so as not to uh, burn any of it. It's all pretty much ready to go. Happy days. Right, that is it. All cooked up. What does it look like? Oh, I show you. There it is. I've got my nice rice. I've got my steak with the sauce. <laughs> Smells good. And we also have ooh, my bourbon barrel scotch ale. Uh, so what we'll do, just to test this out, have it on camera, I'm gonna get a bit of rice and a bit of the steak, a bit of the sauce. Show the camera, ooh. Wow. It has got literally the right amount of everything. And I'm really happy with that. Tastes as good as my, my mum never made that for me actually. But this, this is where it's at right now. Oh, the steak is delicious. The mouthful literally was pouring out with the, uh, the Jack Daniels bourbon. The rice uh, obviously complements that nicely because the rice is absorbing quite a lot of the sauce. And it's just absolutely delicious. Mmm. Another one. For real, it is pretty good. Not pretty good. It is amazing. And then we'll have our little sip of that. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, boy. Now, who says you can't enjoy things and just be content and happy? You're having a good time. Be happy for a good time. While you're eating your main, stop thinking about what you're going to have for your dessert. Just eat your main. Eating your starter, stop thinking about your main. Just enjoy the now. Enjoy what you've got. And right now, I've got a really nice ale. And I've got a flipping good main meal right here. Steak, I mean... No offence, vegans, vegetarians, but who, other than you guys, doesn't like steak? I mean, wow. And then, we've got a really good ale, and it eats, it's full of flavour. It's packing a punch. I'm quite happy with that. God, you can taste the bourbon influence in that and in the steak meal. So, unless you guys just want to hang about and watch me eat, maybe I should offer that. Maybe I should do a video about me eating. I could just be sat there really awkwardly staring at the camera and just eat. Mmm. Mmm. So juicy. I'm going to make a lot of weird noises in a minute eating this. So I'm going to carry on and do that in my own time. I'm going to let you guys go. Yeah, anyway, whiskey bloke. Cooking with whiskey bloke. That was another Drown Group review. Try out the recipe, see what you think. Be nice in the comments. Don't forget to say your friends, subscribe. Hey guys, you'll thank us when you've done it. Hey, lie if you have to, I don't care. And then, um, yeah, just try out this recipe because it's, it's good. Hope you don't mind, different video. It's done now, too late to apologize, so. <laughs> right, see you soon, <laughs> bye.